Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of the Outer Space Renaissance Explorers. I uh, hope you're all having a really beautiful day, night, evening, kind of all of the above. Um, what are we going to do today? First, uh, Apostle has offered to do a drop-in meditation for us. Um, again, this is if you want to offer anything at the very beginning of these spaces and calls, please reach out to myself or Julio or Anna and let one of us know if you want to do one of these start off drop ins. And then immediately after that, we're going to carry the thread from yesterday's conversation. So if there's anything that you know, transpired from the end of last session to now that you wanted to share into this space to keep that thread of conversation going from the inner space to the outer space, then we'll leave some time at the beginning of this to make that connection. Uh, and then after that, we can go over the rest of today's journey that we have on our agenda and dive right in. So without any further ado, I will pass it to Apostle to carry us forward. Thanks, Reiki. Um, so let's do a quick um, settling in. I'll do just a quick meditation, five, no more than 10 minutes. Um, I try to keep it brief because that's not our main focus. So get into a nice position, sitting, ideally with your spine upwards. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of the people. I hope that they are in a very good place. Uh, right now. Um, so let's close our eyes and start by taking two or three deep breaths. Um, so breathing in and then breathing out, out through the side. Oh. Breathing in and breathing out through the side. Oh. Oh. You should ideally feel the, the breeze, the out breath in your body. Um, now, let us just... Ognyan, can you mute yourself? Sorry. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just close your eyes and feel your body feel the place where your um, where your body is meeting the surface of the earth or the chair or the surface at which you're sitting at uh, feel that connection with the ground with our universal ground of being the earth Have a few moments to just feel that. Then move your attention to the heart. It doesn't matter if you can hear it beating or not. Just Put your attention there and connect with your beautiful and loving heart. Then move your attention to your throat. your center of communication, just connect with it, feel it.
then I'll just invite everyone to imagine um, that we are all, all the 28 of us are sitting around the fire. It's a quite a large fire because it has to warm a lot of people. And we're all gathered here with a purpose. It's the evening before the day that we're going to start building this epic garden. Someone has already been to the garden and made a bit of work there. But now all of us have to come together and cooperate, synchronize, resonate with one another and put our our best effort into creating this garden space. This garden space is going to be filled with seeds that are going to be put in the ground and they're going to grow. And from the fruit of the plants that grow there, uh, many more gardens are going to be created on the entire world but our job here is to make sure that this initial garden is well made well created and beautiful and productive so So I invite all of us to look at the fire in our minds and imagine that you're looking around into everyone's eyes. Um, and everybody that's looking at the fire as well. And everyone has an understanding that these people around us, tomorrow we are going to need to count on, on these people. We are going to need to. Uh, Everyone knows that they will have to bring their, their best abilities in order to create the most amazing garden. Everyone knows that in order to do that, They'll need to bring their own inner qualities that they're good at. Some are good at painting, some are good at storytelling, and they will paint the walls and the with their art. Some are good at um, taking care of the soil. Some are good at building irrigation. And they will make sure that the soil is well done and the the seeds have enough water. Some are good at um, arranging the whole space so the plants have enough resources to grow. And some are good at organizing everyone so everything flows in perfect harmony. And all those skills are gonna weave together 
into uh, a beautiful creation process that we're gonna we're gonna start I would just I'll wait just a few more moments in space for everyone to have their own thoughts or images or ideas arise around that fire in preparation. Now with a lot of gratitude, we, the space becomes further and further, smaller and smaller, and we can move our attention to our bodies, to our ground, unit, the place that we're sitting, to our hearts, to our chest, to our back, to our head and face and smile. And we can move our hands and open our eyes and come back and start the process. Thank you for that. Um, much more of a yin energy to start off this session versus the, the breathing with the yang. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, again, I want to keep planting this invitation. This space at the beginning could be for anything. If you have a dance to share, a song to share, spoken poetry, if you've got art that you you know, pack some intention and energy into and you want to share that. And this is kind of like a show and tell session for any gifts that we want to bring into this space to help ground and guide us. Um, okay, so with the inner space yesterday, I, I didn't catch the very end of it, but it was very beautiful. And I was wondering between yesterday and today, if there's any inspiration, wisdom, thoughts, guidance or anything that anyone's holding on to that they want to set as a foundation for this call today. This would be your space to unmute yourself or put your hand up if you'd like to speak. Um, but for the first one, you can just unmute and start going. It is, um, at the very end, I kind of mentioned I had like a I had to really face some of my own uh, inner critic about how I could be better, how I could do better. And then uh, I was checking out with Daya and Tina at the end of the day yesterday, and they brought up the 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 moment, um, like the Rachel. Uh, so, so, so I want to like lift you up as like a as someone who like first time kind of using the app and kind of being bold and brave and and being in the game, <laughs> and and doing the work live in public, uh, figuring out how to go about the process and, and even being challenged kind of seeing it through, but not kind of seeing it through to the end and, and kind of allowing in help, but also being able to just, I don't know, as an example of like what it is to come to the game and to come to the game and play. 
and they kind of show up. And I think everyone that followed that who maybe had any kind of difficulty, it just, it, the whole field kind of shifted. Like there's like a relaxingness that came around the, around the, why the space and the spaciousness is important. Um, and so I just want to raise you up and also uh, raise up the field for 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 that. Thank you, Justin. Um, anyone else? Um, just to, to carry on with that, it, the whole exercise felt like um, just a holding space for whatever happened and that we were all bringing everything that we could bring to the space and then it, it didn't feel like maybe it was perfect by some some concept of what perfection is, but just being here and, and working through it, all of us was was perfect. That's how I feel about it. All right, I'm on a limited diet, so I'm going to be eating my soup here. So I'll just turn the video off when I'm chewing too heavily. No problem. Yeah, I see that inner space is kind of a hard time to cohere energetically and get in the same rhythm. So it would probably be a little bit jarring or unharmonious in the first stages, but ideally we're creating a new pattern for ourselves to be able to step into there. Um, anyone else feel like sharing before we dive in today? All right, then we're just going to keep on flowing. Um, so what are we exploring today? make this big so y'all can see it no that's weird there we go all right so a little bit of our, our journey map here we're going to talk about squads what are they so you know working groups squads pods whatever we want to call them uh, then we're going to dive into our first breakout session um, this is going to be surfacing anything around section zero or really any general big topics that we want to um, bring up and surface today. So we'll break out into groups about three or four, and in between the group of you, um, bring up the biggest items that are on your list, whether it's, again, working something through the constitution that's part of section zero, or different squads slash working groups that you're interested in setting up. Um, then we'll come back together, we'll get a harvest about what we discussed in that session, share it with the whole group. Uh, and then the next breakout is going to be in those squads. So the first breakout, you're like, yes, uh, we think having a squad around redesigning the campaign's uh, governance section within seats. We want to set up a you know, governance squad. Or we want to set up a squad to come up with a new name for the game guide or whatever. If there's a, a tension or a topic you guys find is really relevant, great. Now what we're going to do is we'll set up some breakout rooms for each one of those major um, squad proposals and then people can join them pick the the number one thing that you'd want to join and then the squad groups can come together uh, and then discuss so maybe that squad group is renaming the game guide and that's something that we can do in this call or maybe it's the redoing the governance and that's not something we can design in this call so that'll be setting a time later in the week or getting to know each other or surfacing you know the general frame of the problem that that squad's wanting to solve uh, again, we'll come back and harvest, and we're just going to repeat that process until we've gone through all of the wisdom that we want to do through addressing all of section zero. So if there's anything in that introductory session that we touched on last week that we want to keep changing, we're going to keep doing that until there's nothing left to harvest. Um, after that, if we finish that today, I doubt it, but if we do, then we'll introduce section one, um, and then we'll close today when we have about five or ten minutes left introducing the forum space that was just set up so that we can continue this dialogue throughout the week. Um, cool, so that's the, the general journey today. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open this up for co-creation if this is uh, a direction that makes sense. If I've missed anything here, you can unmute yourself and just yeah, comment on the, the journey itself or the agenda today.
is everyone being quiet today because you're just totally in love with the flow of how things are unfolding or is it just more of one of those days where people feel like more ingesting information and less talking <laughs> i feel more in the latter too so it might be one of those days um but still opening some space in case anyone has anything to add to the agenda so i'll just wait 20 seconds Hi, Reiki. I have one question. There it is. What do you got? Uh, I'm seeing, like, last time we talked a lot about the section zero, or mostly like introduction. And I see here that there will be like an introduction for section one of the game guide. And my question is when we are uh, talking about what we want to, to dive in, in the in the squads, are we going to, can we bring anything from any section? Or do you feel, or what? what's the thought here? Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I think maybe it could get chaotic. Originally, I was thinking that we could bring topics for any of the sections, but maybe that's a little bit messy. Um, so maybe we just bring up squads for section zero until we've done that. So yeah, I, I, I really like that. So if you've got a topic um, or a squad, if you feel like it's a Squad is just another term for like a working group. So if you think this is something that's going to take more time than just, you know, a 15 minute breakout during this call, then you can propose it to be a squad to meet during the week to really come up with a new proposal for it. I don't I know if anything propose, in zero that would fit that. But what do you got, Julian? Yeah, I would maybe propose we take the uh, uh, chapter headings for section zero and maybe create subgroups for that. And if people want to discuss that uh, chapter, they would join, you know, that groups. So that could be a way to kind of feel which are the most hot topics you just see people joining. You can join breakout rooms. Uh, in, I know you probably know that. So you can create the breakout rooms and allow people to choose the ones they want to join, right? So, um, so we could definitely do that for the second breakout. I think for the first breakout, let's just randomize it. We'll put three to four people in a group, and then you guys just surface the most important things that are on your mind within that group. So each group is going to come up with the two, three things that are the most important for that group to bring to the rest. Um, so that'll be our first breakout, and that could be anything. So this one is more of expanding the realm, and then the next breakout will be honing in on section zero. Does that make sense? Um, cool. So we could do that first breakout. So let's do about let's just. Um, four people in each group. How does that feel? Three, four people? Yeah, thumbs up. Cool. So that is what we will do. All right, and we're going to head to those rooms now. So one last minute before I open it up. Again, this is just presencing within your group the most important things that are on your guys' mind that we want to cover. Um, it could be directly related to section zero or it might have a higher priority than that. I just want to bring it all if up. You want to keep, if you want to keep the game guide open during the discussion, just to remember what's on section zero and start to use that as a conversation starter, could be an idea. Yeah, that is a lovely idea. Let me share the game guide right here in the chat. Cool. Any questions before we dive in? All right, and here we go. Hey, Reggie. Hey, Thelma. Uh, hey, how you guys doing? Pretty good. Just had the salad from the garden. <laughs> yeah, guys, I just need to introduce you to my old noisy computer. If you can hear the fan, it's my computer. And I can't help it. When I'm talking, I have that sound in the background. But most of the time, I keep it closed. Not to bother your ears. Right. I think now it's not actually so noisy, so we are lucky. Um, so
so the most important things what is you know alive for you too so maybe Thelma do you want to kick it off okay well what I've been holding uh that I think it's related to to these uh, explorers uh, at some level is about the translations, mm -hmm. um, is about scaling up the movement to those who are not, do not have access to English. Um, and I've been holding that specifically because of the Portuguese, but not limited to Portuguese. I have a specific um, need because I'm working in, uh, in a community in Brazil, in a, in a town, it's a really tiny town. There are less than 5,000 people. Um, it's a city called Gonçalves and they are 70% rural and they don't speak English. And we are developing a game, uh, Game Changers Game. And the intention is to use seeds as the economy um, compensation platform to engage people and have this infinite game. Uh, our vision is to have a game that would be like the operational system for the, the city, that the city organize what the, their needs, their common needs, uh, sort of playing the game. So it's pretty much what seeds wants to, to become and uh, envision to become, but we are doing a slight twist, but still connected. So the foundation is seeds as the economy and then uh, creating missions for the city to, to play. And for us to introduce the, the, this economic foundation, we need to have the materials in Portuguese. And the, and the passport in Portuguese and, or the light wallet, whatever, so that we, we can use. So I'm holding that fire within the seeds ecosystem to have to create a system uh, that will make translations easy. So I'm, I'm not only trying to translate into Portuguese, but to create a process that uh, enables all languages just to plug and play. And, and also using the translation as a movement building tool. So it's not only pure translation, but also helping through translation that a group of people, community, a bioregion, connect, learn, translate, and, and, and scale up. So, uh... A group around how you architect the translation process so that we can maybe yes. centralize this, maybe even set up a reward system so that we're not. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's like a process that people plug and, and do it because I'm I'm feeling and listening to a lot of struggle for people who want to scale up and they want to bring uh, seeds in their communities, but they are just because it's not available yet and they don't know how to do it. Mm. Um, Thank you, Tom. I like translation and cultural scaling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm being really conscious to just ask, uh, call it translation, just not translate <laughs> uh, everything that is behind it and underneath it. Excellent. OK, awesome. I think that's a, a definitely a high priority one. So I think that'll be a really important squad. Um, it's kind of what I'm seeing there. Is that one that you want to lead, Thelma? Would you be the, the lead of that squad, squad lead? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to create that space and I'm already uh, connected to Nyla uh, and Randall. Uh, so we asked you to create a, a channel in, in Seeds for right. that. So I'm already trying to create some sparkles. Awesome. Um, cool. Tao. 
Is that everything? Or is there something else you wanted to present, sir? That is what is really present in me. Excellent. Um, Matteo. First of all, thanks for pronouncing my name so correctly. <laughs> it's not that common. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, actually, uh, my two topics are one is connect very connected with the one that Tama brought. It's about like how can we really empower uh, local teams to create their own like uh, like the last thing that I've been discussing with Dai is like how can we create a, a website about seeds in Portugal, which which have a, a Portuguese version and an English version and like content which is really related to what is happening in Portugal and who is already adopting seed in Portugal, so that. The ecosystem, the local ecosystem, is as much as visible as visible as possible. Um, yeah, and and uh, and the other thing uh, I think you both, especially you, Reiki, know very well what is dear to my heart, which is like the campaigns and co-op uh, system. So how can we look at the flaws there, and how can we improve it? And uh, we actually started already with Daya uh, writing down some questions, which we. Uh, would like to find clarity about and so that they can deliver more clarity to the whole ecosystem and also some other things are more like some are like just like things which are not clear and some are things which we would like to question uh, and see if it actually makes sense as it's designed right now and some others probably just need to be completely created from scratch because they have been thought for now we are focusing on the first two what was that that last sentence what did you say? Was that some I said that, the, no, I said that like uh, uh, the third thing would be like creating something brand new that we don't even know, but for now we are focusing on the first steps because this one feels like, let's wait a little bit for that. Got it. Um, I think it was nice serendipity that you two landed in the same chat here. We're just coming in full alignment with our proposed squad. So what if uh, uh, the group is about regional scaling? So that fits in with need for translations, um, but also you know support packages, like here's a process for setting up a bioregional pilot, right? Um, and maybe a little bit of a step-by-step -step suggestion guide about how to go about doing that. Like step one, go and meet a cafe. You know, step two, go get the cafe and alliance so that they're involved or whatever. Um, and then having regional content, so being able to set up their own domain. That might be nice, and that's something we might even be able to do with the joinseeds.earth. So it is like, you know, Portugal or Cascadia or whatever the group's called, like dot joinseeds.earth, and they can have their own maybe like library instance. Um, yep, translations protocols. I love all of this. So either way, I think this is maybe a, a regional scaling squad. Is that? surmise what we're wanting to accomplish here. And if we open up a group and invite people into that space, would that be the highest peak that we're kind of servicing here? Yeah, just to add one more layer to that, um, the Brazilian gang, <laughs> I'm calling them Brazilian gang, um, they are already start talking about uh, translating the, the Seeds Ambassadors Academy, mm -hmm. because that is also a barrier. For people who want to join and do not speak English, they cannot access the, the Ambassador's Academy. Um, so that also could be, I see Ambassador's Academy in a box. Yes. Um, everything in a box. And, and I don't know, uh, it's also <coughs> if we put everything in a box or in the same squad, then it becomes like, overwhelming or I don't know how to tackle that if we build smaller squads that will add up to a bigger one uh, or if we make a big one and then slice it down <laughs> to take it in parts hmm. um, I think let's try to make it as big as we can to begin with and see how big it gets, and then we can slice from there and fractal. Because we don't be, yeah, because I think it's better biasing it large, and breaking it down, than it being too small that it's fractured. And you don't have the right amount of wisdom there. So, um, 
um, yeah. Okay, cool. Anything else we want to present right now? Um, there is another part that I also am holding uh, because of the spaces that I am in is about events. Um, so bringing seeds, activating seeds in different events, ecosystems and networks. Um, don't know if that can be a squad. Is if this is another another space and conversation, but it's just the, the the spaces that I'm in and that I'm bringing seeds naturally, like planeteers, um, well-being, economy, um, uh, alliance is a big one that already knows about seeds, so. Um, Friends was the one who brought it for the first time last year, and I'm now reactivating that. Um, and there will be a last next year there will be big uh, conferences happening. It's the 50 years of the mm. Stockholm uh, Conference, UN Environment Conference. Um, there will be a parallel conference called We the Peoples that is going to happen simultaneously with the UN conference. And I'm connected to the, uh, the organizer and suggesting we had already a conversation, me, her, and, and friends to activate seats there, doing a pair, like mirroring the process. What we are doing in Planet Years, do the same in uh, We the Peoples. And these con two conferences will happen one in late May and the other one early June, 2022. So these are big opportunities where we have to activate uh, seeds, like bringing seeds in different levels. Uh, you had already said yes to speak in Planet Years and also bringing awards with seeds, doing active, accepting seeds as payment for, for registration. So trying to find different ways to activate within the, the value chain, their value chain. Mm. Yeah, so I see that as like a, a topic group um, for more like events and festivals and bringing them back in, right? Doing mm -hmm. the same thing that we're providing all the, the structures and support for region to get set up uh, a similar approach for setting it up for... Mm -hmm. um, do we want to propose both of those as breakout or as different squads or just do the regional squad for now because that's something you want to be a part of and then we can propose yes. the yeah cool. Yeah, we can start. Um, I then, noticed that you 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 didn't write down the the campaign squad, so I would also add that. The campaign squad. I would call it actually co-op in general, but I noticed that in the game guide the word co-op, it didn't even it's not even get mentioned, so yeah, maybe. it's hard to call it necessarily that. Um, this one is only conflicting to me because if we're just going to focus on section zero and the squads related to that, which is more around um, tree organizing and the tools, which I think this you know regional scaling in a box squad makes sense. Um, but simultaneously, I think the campaigns are really alive for folks, and we can propose that as something right now. Anyway, so yeah, sure. Why. Anyway. I'm I'm on a Chromebook and my functionality like an old Chromebook. My functionality not as uh, evolved as uh, most. Of following us into this group. Um, there you go. Came to an end. Uh, welcome back. So this is the, the best part of the whole event is when we get to harvest all of the beautiful fruits that we just uncovered during our groups. Um, so we'll just go around one group at a time. You can share with the whole group uh, any wisdom that you learned, um, any main topics that you wanted to bring to the table, but also any squads that you want formed. And then we're going to form some breakout groups around the top topics and squads. So we try to narrow in on another seven. 
um, and take it from there. So if each group has, you know, the one highest thing that's most important to them, that's what we want to hear, uh, just in case we have to prioritize. Cool. Um, so just raise your hand if you're assigned as one of the people to share. And then once we get some hands raised, we'll kick this off. All right, so Julia, take it away. Hi there. So yeah, we, we've been discussing around the usage of the game analogy over the game guide, you know, so using the word game and that's a um, hot topic for, for a lot of people. And we, uh, even among us, we, we had kind of different views and uh, the association with um, something that's not serious, something that's uh, only, you know, play or, and, and people are taking this civilization, uh, the, the, the crisis we are in very seriously. So they don't connect too well with the word game. So. We, we kind of have an idea to maybe just call it the seeds guide. So maybe we, in, the, in the working group, we can expand that, of course. But the, just using the game analogy as a background analogy, not just as the main analogy. So like we don't call uh, the, the citizens uh, players, you know. So yeah, just to uh, summarize then, uh, that's the main topic we discussed and we we had some ideas on how to improve that analogy and, and maybe change it a little bit. So yeah, that's the general discussion there. Thank you. You probably didn't hear me, but um, it was apparently not necessary for you to hear me. Um, cool, yes, just introduce the, the sections, but let's not get into too much detail about them because then we'll do that in each breakout. Um, so the first topic is we have game alternatives. Awesome. Uh, Nikki. And we had two topics surfacing. One is about the game guides and using the word game, like uh, Julio mentioned, and also um, how to relearn the idea of play and reflect more deeply on um, what kind of game is, games we want to play. And um, at the same time, not forgetting about the kind of hierarchies that we're bringing from the old game, the old conditioning, and to making that explicit instead of, instead of denying it. Um, that was mainly one of the topics. And the other one around onboarding issues, how to help making people uh, residents, how to avoid pyramid structures forming, who gets rewarded, um, these kind of topics. So I think uh, onboarding and game guides. So, uh... Hi everyone. Um, our group wasn't too clear about one specific topic in, in the section zero um, because the, the question came up of, are we creating something together? Um, and we've just sort of, of like happening together, um, which, is, which spans through the whole game, <laughs> game guide. Um, but, um yeah we we it, it felt sort of like the game guide itself is not alive yet um so this is my interpretation of this that it, we don't really feel yet that we are enacting the game the constitution and the game guide completely yet um and uh we that that, that there we hope that there is not the feeling coming up of being hijacked into something um, put on you. Um, and yeah, th th that's it. Oh, thank you very much. How would, how would you name that? I named it how to embody the game, but that's probably not right. It's, I heard the word hijacking. Um, what would you call that topic in breakout group? Max. How, no, I, I like how do we embody, not the game, but how do we embody our values, like our constitution, because we do want to co-create. How do we co-create together um, as individuals, but together? Awesome. Um, perfect, let's keep it going. Uh, Alan, I think you might be up next. Thank you. 
thank you. Um, our group what, was good fun. I'm uh, everyone else was is relatively new to the whole system. So instead of bombarding them like with 20 ideas and things that I think are important and everything, I thought, all right, <laughs> I'll answer some questions instead that people may have. But those questions lead to a topic. And that topic is very specifically with pilot projects, um, with uh, work of ambassadors, how do we make sure that these projects can still function with a limited amount of people and participants having access to the digitalized world and having access to the wallet, for example, having access just to internet per se. Um, so yeah, that was, that was the one big topic. Yeah. How do we make seats accessible to people who don't have the options or privilege um, to, to engage in that way with us? So if I summarize this as a, a group for pilot projects around, you know, some of the most vulnerable amongst us in the world, you know, I've heard refugee mm -hmm. camps before. I think this kind of fits under there. So limited digital access and the like, so kind of a working group around that. Epic. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Telma. Um, yes, in, in our group, um, I think three, well, I will speak to uh, two main subjects. Um, one that was very clear, that it's easier <clears throat> and clear, at least in my mind, um, is about translation and uh, yeah, which is something that Anna uh, sparkled in me in earlier conversations and that I saw in different um, circles and especially within the Brazilian uh, gang. I always ask, uh, is a, a nice way to call all uh, Brazilians. Um, that they started the movement to create uh, a process to have all the materials translated and remove the language as a barrier. So how can we create a process for removing language as a barrier to scale up the movement? Um, and how can we design a process that people from different languages just plug and play and then scale up and use this process as a uh, movement building as well. Not only pure translation, but also learning about uh, the movement and activating the movement within the, uh, the bioregion. So this is one, and I would love to invite Matteo to talk about the campaigns. If... Thank you, Thelma. Well, it generally, it's just like a one in topic that emerged, but since it's not in the section zero, we won't dive into the sections. So uh, whenever there will be the sessions about section two, then we will dive into that topic, I believe. Awesome. Yeah, that's a really, really important one. Um, I'm wondering if, you know, pilot projects and limited digital access, if that falls under translations as it's all kind of encompassed in local scaling, like how do we support local cultures? Um, so maybe let's push those two together and that's all about how do we support pilot projects? Um, and that could have the whole range of, you know, where they fit at that technical scale of capabilities. Um, and cool. Uh, Tina. Uh, so, uh, so I'm just speaking to a, a weird stress point that just comes up now as we keep repeating the same word and I was looking at it in the document and I'm like, wait, this could have a key to some of these aspects around play and game and um, so, so let in thinking about scalability what like when I used to try to figure out how to get money from some of these umbrella investment companies I'd always say, it's not about, it's not about exit plan and scaling it's about 
legacy and repeatability. And even within the, la the language aspect of this, like if we were paying attention to the repeatability of a pattern rather than the scalability of a pattern, then it would allow for these spontaneous eruptions of play and various languages that can inform the entire system according to the rural to the to the hyperlocal and and yet bring a cohesiveness through this modeling of uh, repeatability rather than scalability so I thought I'd just bring that into the people's awareness um, for clarity are you wanting this to be a, a topic breakout to explore in depth and see how we might rejig the section zero cool so then seven is on legacy and repeatability beautiful thanks tina um justin yeah, so i threw up like a description in the chat but uh it, it sounds kind of like what Tina was saying but a little bit different also some mix between tina and max so idea was like we have like this this list of challenges and also these list of goals but in our day-to-day -day work in haifa or in seeds or in samara uh you know these things aren't really present with us they are in the field but they're not really spoken about and so there's like idea of how do you actually bring these like the reality of like renaissance like the rebirth or de death in life like how do we actually you know die and re re recover rebirth every day in our work in order to kind of be the change we want to see in the world so you know the game kind of landing through the presencing of our challenges and our goals um do like uh, maybe repeated patterns or something like that um but that was the, the kind of topic there uh, so how do you get these things to really be alive for us day to day um, within our work um, yeah. awesome um so number eight um apostle so uh we talked also about the word game in the game guide and that uh doesn't feel very um uh, maybe uh, reflective of the serious regenerative work that a lot of people wanna uh, start doing. Uh, and Miguel had some ideas of how to uh, make it better. Also, uh, we talked shortly about uh, one idea of the place from which everyone is coming from while engaging the system and the guide um, like because every system can be uh, like can be abused if you're coming from a place that you want to abuse it <laughs> and every system can be made more resilient if you're coming of a place that you want to make it more resilient and I'm, I'm not sure if we can cover that in the game guide but it just came up as a um, as a topic. Yeah. Um, do you feel like that falls under one of the existing topics, or would you want a new topic for that, or does that probably fit into game alternatives and play topic? What do you think? I'm not sure how you can like. Um, I don't know if if there is a way to spot abusive behavior somehow uh, and like highlight it or um, I have no idea <laughs> where to put that. I'm not sure. I don't think that it's existing right now. Maybe. So it's yeah, spotting abusive behavior. Is it, yeah. Isn't part of the guardians uh, part of the the game guide? Yeah, I think maybe it's not section zero. I think there's a lot of pieces we're going to get over in the governance section um, that I think will uncover this more. So maybe let's put a hold on exploring this more in depth until we have a few more of the pieces identified. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Then let me summarize. We've got some awesome topics. So. Um, one group is going to be game alternatives and play. Uh, one's on onboarding, so the ease of onboarding. Uh, one's on how to embody the constitution and co-create together. Um, five is on pilot projects. So this is all about um, translations, how to make things accessible, um, et cetera, et cetera. Accessibility. Um, another group will then be on 
remembering reality of regenerative renaissance. So I'm going to call that R to the fourth power. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then number six is on repeatability and legacy over exit and scaling. Nice. Ability. Um, right, just for clarity, uh, you joined uh, in the chat. There is number five pilot projects, uh, ambassadors limited digital access, and then number six translations. And when you described here, I heard you putting in one group. Is that right? Yeah, we don't actually have to do that. We can have two. So maybe just a quick show of hands. Do we want to plug them together so that it's all around pilot projects, which involves the need to translate? Or do we want to have translations be in a totally separate squad? And then, so if you want them to be two separate squads, just give me a hand up and we'll have two options. If you want to see them in the same squad, let's put a hand up. All right, I see no hands for same squad, maybe two or three actually. Seems like more want them to be two things. So we'll have translations be a totally separate thing. Uh, where the pilot projects is more focused on accessibility in all its forms. And this is technology actually with more with the main topic there. Quick question, um, how to embody the constitution and remembering reality of regenerative renaissance, isn't that more or less the same topic? Could be. Um, Justin, does that, and who else? I think that's Tina and Justin, right? Does that feel like those want to be the same one? Yeah, it could be. Uh, and we have a lot of R's going on there, so we got that going for us. So then we have six groups. Um, cool. The idea of what we want to do here. So R to the fourth power. Um, step one of these breakout sessions, vote with your feet. It is not offensive in any way to move to another group, and it's totally awesome for people to move throughout different groups and be able to, you know, give their perspective in multiple places if that's what they want to do. Um, it is nice if there's at least a couple people who stay in one group and actually hold the ground there, but we'll see how it unfolds. Second, uh, what we're actually trying to do here is come to concrete proposals to make a shift. So that's what we're wanting to do in each one of our groups is can we in the time that we're given right now actually formulate a couple proposals maybe it's one that we can all get behind or maybe it's two or three that we need to be you know teased out because uh, that way we can bring it back to this group and actually use this to progress forward so you know game alternatives to the word game for example it would be great if that group could actually just align on one and then bring it back to here and say hey this is what we thought was the best um so examples like that um, Nick, you have your hand up, so maybe I'll give you the floor for a second. Yeah, I have a bit of a, a meta question, like how do we, or do we decide what's worth exploring and what's not worth exploring? Because I feel like there's at least one topic there that I wouldn't explore personally, but um, so it, is it like, let's explore anything that anybody wants us to explore or um, maybe let me, let me just uh, say my objection and then everybody can just do whatever they want. <laughs> so, so I feel like it's not worth exploring um, people who have, do, who don't have ex technology or don't have access to the internet because it's an impossible problem. And uh, we are much better off simply just developing for people who have the technology. And once it works, we can think about those problems, like it, structuring it in a, linear layer rather than thinking right now about an impossible problem. I, I feel like it's a waste of time. <clears throat> That's all. Um, so with that objection in play, awesome. Um, <laughs> don't want to join that circle because of that, don't. Um, and then we'll just go from there. <laughs> but here, let's, let's, Julia, you got something, what do you got? Yeah, I, I have one idea, we have like, 30 minutes um, for, for that last part. So I, uh, maybe a uh, better use of our whole uh, attention here today is, uh, I don't know, maybe have Apostle present the new forum space that we have. And then we, we do a, a, the breakouts here and the, we carry that discussions to the forum so we can continue on the uh, Explorer space and, and, you know, to extend that to the forum. That's one way to 
sure. continue the amazing discussion that's going to be started here. I think rather than side railing it so we don't have to mention the rooms again, let's dive into the rooms, but let's keep that in mind to keep this conversation going to the forum and Apostle will introduce that before this call's over. Just so we can stay on a linear thought path here. Okay, makes sense, perfect. Um, cool, so copy that last comment that I just put in the chat. I'll double put it again so you can carry it with you because you're not gonna see these comments when you leave. So grab that. Um, and that's what the six rooms are. So there's six different rooms. Just follow the numbers there. And again, remember to vote with B. So enjoy, and we will see you all back here. Let's have about 15 minutes. Um, yeah, 15 to 20 minutes, very maximum to uncover all of this, come up with a proposal um, and assign someone to come back here and present whatever that proposal might be, even if it's three different ideas that was you know, brought up. Awesome. So you get to manually join one. Um, if you don't know how to run the, the breakout groups, then just send me a message or stay here and tell me what group you want to join and I will move it. Um, you vote with changing your room. Yeah, right. You, you actually assigned everyone to a room already, so they are going to be teleported automatically. You can, so we have to ask you to assign us two different rooms. I don't think so. Um, yeah, because you guys are all here. So you guys... I didn't go to room three because I, I, so... I didn't want to go to room three. I want to go to room one. <laughs> yes, and, same uh... for me. All right, let me try this one more time then. I called everyone back. There, there is a way to create the room so that people are not teleported immediately so they can open breakout rooms and choose the one they want to go. I think it's the last option there. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't going to let me recreate the rooms until they technically all close in 15 more seconds. So we are just going to wait one moment, 10 seconds. All right, so I'm going to do it manual. Um, let's go options. participants choose cool all right so there's six rooms and you're supposed to be able to choose on your own so there it is ah great now we can pick open click breakout rooms on your zoom client and join the room that you want or just verbally tell me which room you want me to send you to and i can send you there if you don't know how to do it Raki, I'm on the iPhone, so please send me to room number five. It will take me too long to find out how to get there. No problem. Room number five. And you're off. Thanks. Mm, still here. Keep signing you. There you go. Good Thank you. Okay. Anyone else want me to send them somewhere? Oh, Alex, eat room number three. Okay. Um, John Love, number two. All right. Anyone else? I'm, I'm fine here. I don't have to uh, discuss one of these topics per se. I'll just hang around. No problem. You can hang out in the quiet space. Um, Nikki or Rachel, you want me to send you either of you anywhere? Rachel? Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to figure out the phone. So, yeah, send me somewhere. You did too, got it. Yeah, that works.
Hello. I'm checking to see if we wanted like a formal facility. We don't need that, but I just said maybe be easy. Make sure everyone has their chance to have their voice heard. Uh, is that something we want or we just want to kind of let it flow? We could just um, maybe capture the main points of what we're saying in one document so that the presentation goes smoothly as a course of action, perhaps. So you're, okay. you're suggesting uh, like a ritual as a, as a playful way to you know, have uh, repeatability or, or to create patterns that work, right? Or to, to teach patterns that work. Sort of like we have a nice ritual and it's also teaching you a pattern that already works somewhere else. That's really, that's really nice. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. I was gifted with an example of this from Russia and it really blew my mind so and i'll be telling that story next week so i don't have to tell it here but it was really this link to like oh my god inherent in these ceremonies even the spreading of salt in a circle has a scientific basis in something that is real that we have forgotten so we have this access to ancient knowledge through these vehicles of ceremony and um it's all there like an mm. like a dna <laughs> Did I, can you go over your point again one more time? Cause I didn't, I, I didn't, it didn't, I need to hear it again. Yeah, well, I think it's just maybe um, identifying a, a, a specific part of the point you made is just that it's, it's a question of a pattern as opposed to an, an ideology or a concept, or like, as you say, something that's difficult to transfer over time or space or culture. Um, it's, and, and then it's, I guess it's getting to the fundamental of, of anything is is and that's sort of how my mind seems to work is that i i can understand like i can't understand the intricacies of something until i understand the fundamental basis that it's all built upon which can be difficult sometimes but um it, it's it's a more inherent and lasting knowing of something but i love the cultural thing and that's yeah drawing parallels with with the local culture here on the bc coast with the first nations and and how they're traditional and it's difficult because it's just been so destroyed by the indian act and the way that we've we've administered you know tried to assimilate them and um yeah we i won't go into that right now <laughs> may i jump in with an observation but having said that i'm quite removed from the detail of what's been happening. So if I step on toes or say something that's wrong, forgive me. So I'm, I think I'm in the repeatability room. I wanted to be in the startup room or the, or the, sorry, pilot projects room, but I think there's some overlap here. And what I mean by that is I had a really interesting conversation with Carly, Carly Monty, I think, um, who's somewhere in Central America and she made a profound statement to me, which I think is what I'm going to use in future seeds projects if I'm lucky enough to be involved in them. And she said the easiest way of getting seeds understood by local communities, First Nations people, Indigenous people, a place where I particularly want to get a seeds project going is to go and pay something for them, something that's meaningful to them, just pay the expense, get it done, and then you immediately have their attention and that way you can start introducing some of the concepts around seeds. But until you can actually cover a meaningful expense for them, it's going to mean nothing. So this idea of a pilot project, and Nick, I was quite surprised when you said, well, if they don't have internet access, then tough, we can't solve that problem. That, that really hurt, <laughs> uh, but in a good way, I think, because I think we can come up with a solution around here. So part of what I'm writing and this thing called T-Cube, which at some stage will hopefully get a chance to explain it. But this is a way of taking a bunch of seeds and a bunch of money that can pay some other meaningful expense to a, for a local community, um, and then have a membrane that allows a flow between those two different currencies is, a, I think, a, a pattern, a way that we can easily repeat this. So I've got some ideas and I think we can do this, but to me, this is a way of getting pilot projects going with a pattern that is repeatable. Um, and and I, th I think we need some 
a, a, a project or a place within seeds where we address this question. So it covers quite a few different topics, including translatability, where translation is between two different currencies, not only languages. Um, Anyway, I, I, I think there's an answer here, but there's a way of getting projects going, pilot projects going quickly and easily, where there's one person who's proposing the project within the seeds community, but a whole lot of other people involved in the project that may never know about seeds, but we're just getting some stuff paid for them. And we're kind of the interface. The, the, I don't know if any of that makes sense. So let me stop there because I don't want to make this too long, but I think there's some answers here. Thank you, Michael. Um, I saw some really interesting overlaps. Melanie, did you want to speak to anything um, before um, I say anything? Yes, please. Um, directly to Michael, just to add on this, is the stewardship of conscious money flows or regenerative money flows. Mm -hmm. And the, this image came up while listening to you because I feel I was attracted by the word repeatability instead of scalability. And still I know we need scalability. And the image that is just coming up is because of the currency and the flow, it's a river. You can never step into the same river again because it's flowing and still we want to repeat something. So the interesting question for me is how to create a kind of blueprint that can go again into that river, even though it's not the same river. That's all I want to add right now. Anyone else before I tr attempt to tie a thread, a, a thread through these beautiful fabrics we bring? Just uh, to... Yeah, uh, maybe just one more thing that um, okay. um, the repeatability is for me, our goal is to set up circular economies so that we get an actual you know, currency flow going. And the way to do that, if we figure out how to do that in one local region, then that's kind of a repeatable pattern that we you know can apply in other regions as well so we really need to solve it only one even if you solve it for like five people then suddenly it becomes a repeatable pattern even if it's like a very small environment so yeah that's all i wanted to say I wanted to say thank you because the circular economy part was the one that was just missing in my kind of image of the, the river. I, I feel that design will help us to get repeatability into the systems. Thanks. Okay, Max, anything before I attempt to <laughs> so this a bit and then we'll go from there uh, it's okay i would like justin to to voice it cool i, I feel uh attention i hate that word so i'm not gonna use that word but it's not actually it's not real attention but attention because of the, what's happening here so it's like repeatability in itself can just repeat patterns that are destructive and extractive or authoritarian or that aren't actually the values or principles that actually bring about regeneration and so i want to say like in every moment, in every meeting, in every group, being really aware of the practices that are being enacted are so critical. So right now we're kind of like, we have a couple different subjects happening. I think Tina's getting ready to run a thread through them. But at the same time, like uh, that's a really interesting power structure and also really interesting decision-making structure. There's delegation happening, who got to speak. There's interesting, it's not about you at all, but and also, so we have like these, this list of like what, nine major core issues or whatever they are, the challenges of our time. And these things are not just coming out of nowhere. They're coming out of like repeatable patterns that are enacting things that we don't want to see in the new world. And so I just want to say like in this moment, I feel a lot of those things alive. <laughs> uh, and I'm not sure how aware we are that they're happening. And so I really want to be kind of clear that like um, something about what the, the thing that, because I actually said, hey, I, I want this concept around um, whatever the four R's were, but like really kind of the reality or remembering the like this regenerative renaissance like in our lives day to day is like this thing and it's kind of got swallowed up by the by the by the by the, by the repeatability words but i want to say that even that is like conglomerism <laughs> it's like eating the little things or eating things as they join and not actually giving them the space to be able to exist within the body uh you know as they are so that you know i'm giving voice to that 
not because it has to be that way, not because I'm stuck on that, but just kind of like, I mean, I'm being kind of divisive, but I mean in a way that's like just meant to uh, disrupt the patterns a little bit and disrupt the, the, the repeatability to make sure that there's room to actually address what wants to be addressed here. I'm not even sure that I'm clear on what that is. Um, that's me. You're, you're saying it has to be a, dy a dynamic, dynamic repeatability. So what we're repeating is something that constantly evolves and uh, forms itself to our, our best practices. No, no I'm, I'm not saying that. No. Um, but it's, it's close to something like that. It's uh, it's because dynamic repeatability that's okay too. But if you're not grounded in a principle, or you're not actually a source within a a, a problem that has a scale that's worth kind of approaching, it's already been mapped out in the game guide, right? To, to there, um, then there's there's no just because you're evolving, adapting. That could just be you're changing what you're doing, but you're never actually getting a, a pattern that's going to be successful. And so there's something about the. That, uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm going sorry. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I want to, I want to clarify the disruptive aspect of um, the like I I'm coming at this from a different sensibility, and I feel like it's really present for this particular meeting at this particular time, is only because it was grounded in the beginning by a sort of um, a, a call for an awareness of the power of ritual when it's actually grounded in something that is. Um, thriving in nature and of a regenerative principle. So there's a way of continuing or, or there's a way of offering this continuity with the living thrivable principle-based action-oriented relationship with nature that happens through the vehicle of ceremony. And when the context of that, when the basis of that has been broken and there's no longer this continuity thread through it, then that's when it becomes dogma. That's when it becomes religion. That's when it becomes cult. And then yes, that's a repeatable negative pattern. But if you're starting from the beginning where you're being informative to the play, to the story, to the game, to the thing that is linked to the natural system that actually works and everyone can see it. But that as a repeatable pattern is gonna look different according to bioregions. So it's same and, same and, and same and just a bit different because it's, uh, it's, it's receptive to the natural system that it's based on. So I'm not talking about a repeatable pattern that's not, I'm just referring to this sense of play that I would like to keep keep alive and I'm just seeing and I just had a, a moment of revelation about how ceremony arises out of this uh, this horizon horizon of creativity and to sort of I'm just protecting that kernel of um, wisdom that's all I'm not trying to create issues. Uh, if, I, if I could just respond back, I wasn't talking about you, Tina. I was talking about the group as a whole. So I don't know that anyone else brought the same thing you just brought forward in here. So I want to honor that. Like what uh, Michael said and what Nicholas said and what Jedi said and what Melanie said, we're not coming from that same lens or perspective. And so if we're going to thread things, if we're going to really hear what's happening, here, I think it's really important to recognize that not everybody has that lens. And that thing may not be even substantial enough to have a collective proposal or to call collective intelligence yet because it hasn't, it hasn't become alive. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's really about what's happening here uh, and, and where everyone is at in some way uh, on this proposal making because that is the, the, the practices that are gonna go and act, be enacted out in the world from this, from, from this moment. Uh, that's, again, that's my own lens, but I am trying to speak more like, not, I'm not trying to put something on, I'm just trying to uh, look at what, it, what was happening here at, at end patterns possibly. Um, just from a pseudo facilitator lens, um, we are about to end this, uh, the breakout. So if we can align on a couple thoughts, I, I think we might've actually merged two rooms that could have still been their own two rooms. So I think to fully address what you're talking about, Justin, I think it's a different thread. Um, but I think it's a foundational thread, which is, I think it's always a good question we want to ask in every one of these spaces that we're in. Um, so incredible for presencing that, but I'm also feeling like that was a given, <laughs> but that's just because that's how I operate and it's my bias. Uh, so, but either way, from uh, the facilitator lens, I think, Tina, you're holding on to the most wisdom here. So maybe you can just sur surmise right now what you'd like to cover and if you have any questions for us um, and what you're going to share with the larger group. Okay, and then maybe it would be really helpful to get a thumbs up if I've managed to at all capture any of what's going on here. <laughs> um, so 
repeatability um, was something that we all, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm interestingly, okay, hold on, hold on. I liked the pilot overlap and the um, the connection with the First Nations people and this this supportive aspect of paying for something that is worth something to them in indigenous to where they are in place and time. And the way that can be sort of linked to this understanding of um, the function of repeatability within pattern as, as even connected with ceremony and ritual that then binds that to this, this operation of play that transcends it being something not serious. It's very serious. It becomes a vehicle for like addressing through ceremony, through pattern, through answering real needs with people where they are to reconnect us to some of those patterns that existed when we were in a better relationship with natural systems. So it's just this interesting way through repeatability that links it back to indigenous teachings, back to people who are in place and time, people, it, it links history, it links play, it links all kinds of things. It even links translations because when you're dealing with ceremony, you can transcend language a bit. Um, so I think I, did I, hands up if I covered lots of yes. good stuff we covered? If, if I may, we need to yeah. find easy ways of, of tr triggering seeds inspired projects and, and make that repeatable. Okay. Welcome back to the home garden. And we all just went off to forage in the forest for some beautiful fruits of wisdom and potential proposals. Um, so. If you are assigned to share and give the harvest, just throw your hand up. We'll use the same process every time. Um, whoever's quickest to the trigger, oh, there you go. So Alaki, you can uh, take us off first. Perfect, I'm the one that has the, the least concrete harvest from all the groups, I guess. Um, first of all, I would just like to share that I feel that it's a little bit too early for a proposal. And just want to put it out there, at least in our group, it was way too early to have a concrete proposal. Um, and second, I feel that if we want to get a harvest out of that, it would mostly be of how to understand better the puzzle of uh, the co-creators. So what all of us are actually bringing into the game so it can become a real co-creation. So it can become everybody who's involved is putting a small piece of their own essence into this co-creation. Uh, we don't know exactly the how, but I think that that's the, that's the path we are taking with this exploration. Are we waiting for someone? Ooh. Beautiful, thank you for sharing that. Um, so was, there wasn't a concrete proposal and that's okay because we can continue carrying on these threads. So um, the group that just met or you grant in any of your groups, feel free to reach out to each other on Discord, set up calls during the week and keep continuing the, the thread of this conversation forward if it didn't get as far as it wanted to. Um, Tina. May it be so that I carry the <laughs> river forward in a, in a respectful manner to everyone that was present. Um, so in terms of a river, and when we're looking at currency flow, and then we're looking at it in terms both of play and a re-evaluation of what it means to be rather than scalable, repeatable, repeatable lands it very much at a in a kind of a beginning, almost like pre-language, but also a beginning in a place where we are and a beginning perhaps in small pilots. And of course, and this, this flow needs by necessity to translate itself um, along the flow of the river as it's 
yes scales as it yes widens but it, as it also like how to create how to create something that holds that that original that original intention and creates that kind of flow that we want that does indeed feel playful and like a serious play because it addresses the very substantial stuff that we care about being aligned with our lives within our lives our whole lives and with other people's whole lives and within indigenous places that are whole things and whole systems in themselves. So when we look at the word repeatable, we see within it this thread that has to do with perhaps establishing, not establishing, to reawakening the process of ceremony and, and ritual where, where that becomes a playful um, access point to this notion of repeatability simply because what's at the heart of ceremony and ritual are real stories of how we're connected to nature. Like even the salt circle, even though it's become dogma, even though it's become somewhat cult, somewhat religious and can be questioned as a ceremony by a lot of different people, at its inception point, it had a real relationship with magnetism in our natural system. Salt is an essential critical element of, of alchemy. And within every ceremony, within every ritual, you can find these gems of RNA that express and teach on that level. And so repeatable becomes access to these ceremonies, access to these stories, access to our connection with nature, and also starting in small pilots is, pilots is translatable into a larger whole system and also allows for play. I think I covered everybody. If not, you can raise your hand and Come on all. That's it. I did it. I think you did do that. And you know, uh, what I might just add is if we're replicating, we want to replicate biological systems. And that's how DNA spreads, is it becomes that DNA packet, which is repeatable, but it's also scalable and it's evolvable. So it's providing that base DNA level, but every organism that gets that basic DNA is going to evolve a different path. So that's how I think this evolves, isn't it? Evolving through bringing everything to sameness, but evolving for creating diversity. So it's actually a fork where we're spreading things out. So it's, it's reversing the energy of the last couple of millennia, which was to concentrate all the energy to one point and dispersing it, but using the same patterns to do that. Um, beautiful. And if we can put that into a nice little capsule that we could deliver to local communities and pilots for them to just, you know, digest. Awesome. But we'll stay away from vaccines. We're not going to inject it. Um, Tyler, take it away. Thanks. Um, so let's see, we were, we were chatting um, accessibility and pilots. Um, and I think the, the conversation was largely just kind of a, a response or a, a reflection on what Nicholas raised, um, because I think a lot of us felt a bit strongly um, that focusing on accessibility, whether that's technological or language or financial or whatever it might be, is a very significant um, kind of priority for us in, in building this community. And um, you know, we never we never centered in around a clear proposal around it, but there there was kind of a shared sense that, um, you know, maybe we proposed that uh, we'd like conversation spaces in this forum um, as part of the game guide to um, really dive into what that means um, and open up conversations around um, like a true. Uh, a true and uh, patient conversation about diversity and what that means to this community. Because if we continue just to say, we're only gonna build these tools um, in a way that the people who are ready to use them can just sign up and get good to go, we're gonna continue to see uh, a community and ecosystem here that looks like a very particular part of the globe. And I get we're not trying to build something that works for absolutely everyone here, but I do believe strongly that we are going down a wrong path if we're not finding ways to interact with a diversity of communities and learn from that, because that's what collective intelligence brings. So it's just a proposal for that to be held with the, the responsibility it deserves. Um, incredibly beautiful, thank you. 
Um, so the other thing we're harvesting here is squads that will continue to be threads. So for example, on Haifa, we have this governance circle where every Wednesday we just meet to talk about governance in Haifa. So it's just a guild. Um, it might be really nice that if it's every week, maybe every other week, whatever the, you know, the pattern is, but that we have a diversity call. Whatever we call it, maybe diversity call seems a little bit pandering, but, but we can call it something maybe a little bit more inclusive. Um, but that we just get together and we sense check, like how can we make this more accessible? Are we taking actions to do that? If not, why not? You know, how can we improve on this? And we just constantly keep having the dialogue and holding space for it. I think that's one of the most important elements here is we don't necessarily need to know what's happening. We just need to hold the space and continue to meet and bring that energy. Uh, I think that's one of the most important things we're doing here in Renaissance Explorers too, is that it's not so structured, which might feel uncomfortable for many folks that it's not just like a university lecture that's got a very clear purpose and you know start and middle, um, but that we're holding more space for open flow to happen and for us to uncover these threads and create them together. So it's a different process, but anyway. Um, so that's one of the things we're harvesting here is creating these squads. So I'm going to start writing them out and let's just listen to them. If these ideas come up that we can have for a squad. Um, so I'm going to go to Julio next. Hey there. Yeah. For group one, we have been discussing the game and play analogy and um, we were really connected to changing, to proposing a change. The, the original attention is that some people that arrive on seeds, they feel disconnected because they see the word game and game for them means something that's not uh, serious. That's some, something like a child's play. And, and they are connected to the crisis that we are facing right now in, in the world. And they want to take action and they maybe sometimes see if they are just playing a game, this is not gonna help. And they don't, they don't want to play games because most of the games they, they play are games for where someone wins and someone loses. Like uh, uh, not a, uh, they are zero sum games, right? So, and then- uh, Can you the, copo gente encher? Oops, hi Thelma, you're muted, <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Brazilian gang, yay. <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right, so yeah, so the, the original, the initial proposal we are crafting uh, goes around calling the game guide uh, something more simple and to the point like the seeds guide, right? So it's, um, it's, it's a guide to how to, you, to use seeds, how to you know, learn this, this new way of, of living and, and, and thriving in this new regenerative renaissance. And then we propose uh, maybe switching some of the terms in the guide. But the idea is that we, we're not abandoning the, the game analogy altogether, of course, uh, it's, but it, having it more like a background analogy or something that uh, can be used to we can say we use uh, game gamification and gaming elements to engage people and to allow people to, you know, um, have a more fun experience, like a better user experience. We run experiments as well, and we connect to the data. And um, but uh, it's it's definitely not uh, for play. I mean, it's not it's not just a game. You know, it's we're talking about the real stuff. You know. <laughs> And yeah, so this is the initial discussion. I'm going to type it up on the forum so we can continue adding to that ideas and proposals. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Apostle. So um, first we, our topic was onboarding ease. Uh, the ease of onboarding. Uh, we talked about, um, Jan talked about how it's sometimes hard to onboard uh, normal people who are not into crypto. It's hard to explain the whole idea to them. Uh, also, uh, John, John mentioned that maybe we should not uh, like market to everyone right now because stage is very much in a building phase. And we should uh, like maybe uh, 
invite only the builders, only the people who want to like come in and start creating with it. Uh, and I was also thinking about the technology adoption curve. If anyone knows about it, uh, is a curve where uh, every technology is being adopted first by the innovators, then by the early adopters, then by the uh, majority, then by the um, late adopters, and the fifth one I always forget because <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Uh, so right now I'm seeing that Seeds is very much uh, focused on the innovators and the early adopters. And it's actually one of the uh, very few crypto projects that is dipping its toes into the majority. Uh, but that whole transition from uh, like being adopted with the early majority and with the, um, with the like most of most of the people, I forgot the technical term, uh, will be an interesting uh, problem to tackle. How to like address that? Um, yeah. Also, we talked about uh, the need to invite other people in order to become a citizen in that process. Uh, John talked about that, and I also felt that. And there is a feeling that um, is this a multilayer marketing thing? Like, I'm not sure if I should invite other people. <laughs> so, uh, John um, proposed to remove the requirement of bringing other people in order to remove to move from re resident to citizen, um, which I'm not 100% sure that I agree, but that was his proposal. And maybe we can bring it to the forum for further discussion. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, so the facilitator hat, um, I for some reason thought our session was two hours today. So I was planning on that window and I really apologize for those that were planning for 90 minutes because for some reason I just totally forgot. Um, so if we, if you do have to go, please don't feel, you know, held into this space. You can leave right now and this will be recorded and we're going to wrap up in the 20 minute window or as quick as we can. Um, so again, I apologize for doing that and I will try to keep punctual for next week's. Um, so let's get the harvest from the last one here. Hey, Nara. Hello, bon dia everybody. Um, so we were talking about translations and we we touched several um, topics on that note. Um, then uh, let's let's put it in a summary. Uh, we are talking about uh, a creation of a process um, to guide translate translations because we are seeing it happening here and there, very in the early beginning. Uh, but to, to create a structured process in some level to help on those other languages also that are going to come to translate. Um, we discussed some topics on, on accessibility because we, we both agree, it was me and Thelma in the room, uh, we both agree that um, Sometimes a simple translation of words in documents, they, they are not enough to reach people. We have like several linguistic variations all around the world that goes to every single uh, country or so. And sometimes a literal translation can't reach um, those that are actually living in countryside that are producing re regenerative uh, planting and so and so. Uh, so we we started discussing our ideas actually here and there. It, it all leads to the same uh, reason and the same destination. So we started to talk on like how to, to make, to create a process to that that can be spreaded and how actually to, to include uh, the translations in the other process, not to be just a bunch of 
translators just making documents and how that can coexist with the, the circles and the production. So uh, a good example of that is something that is in the early beginning um, here in Brazil, as we are having the, the translation kick within the um, Ambassador's Academy being uh, created in the language and uh, co-creating it together, serving here and there. And I think, Thelma, if you want to add up something, feel free. And thanks for the space. You did a good job in summarizing it. So it's just to say that we are holding the, the squad to evolve and, and design a beautiful process that could be plug and play for other languages and bioregions and communities. Ooh, so I captured that as another um, squad, which is on translations and accessibility. Um, so I've captured three uh, potential squads. If there's any more missing here, just add them to Discord in general. Um, if you're feeling like you're the lead of any one of these squads, if this is the tension slash wisdom that you brought, um, then I'd say create a time that you want to carry this conversation for during the week and just propose like three different times on a Discord comment. And then people can vote, you know, one, two or three for the time they like. And then at some point tomorrow, just pick the winning time and go for it and have a call during the week. Um, it's, I think it's important that we just set times and just go for it and however many people can show up can show up, but not trying to find unanimous consent because then the calls just don't happen and it takes a lot of energy to find, a, <laughs> find the same time. Um, so anyway, that's what I'd say to carry these conversations forward because they're so vital and we don't have enough time to really keep getting into them in this session. So for the rest of today, what were we going to do is I'm going to give the space to Apostol to go over the forum so you can introduce this new tool feature that we have to start carrying our conversations forward. And, um, so Apostol, if you wanted to take it away and show us, there you are. Yay. I'll just share my screen, uh, screen one. Okay, so I'll just go through quickly through the presentation that I've prepared and I have a video that goes really a lot more slowly through the presentation. So, um, yeah, I'll just skip uh, some ideas. So the idea is that right now we're using this court which this code is very good for uh, basically hanging out and having uh, very short conversations in time frame, uh, and it also is very a little bit chaotic, which may be good, but also may dilute a little bit of the energy of a conversation, and has a very low cost of noise. Uh, and we have to like do this work of evolving this game guide and making it very, very, very more beautiful. Uh, so Google Docs is very good for suggesting and editing, but has limited capacity for conversations and for going meta on topics like going a, a levels of abstractions above the text. That's not the purpose of the Google Drive. So this is what we introduced the discourse forum, which is in a very early stage. There are just a couple of uh, categories there. Uh, the idea is that it's built on uh, the idea of forum, not a chat like Discord. So uh, it has threads. Threads have limited scope and specific topic. They're usually more long form conversations and the history is preserved and the, the conversation itself is more slower and more thoughtful, or that's how I experience it. And there's a higher cost of noise uh, in a threat. The threat should be focused. So um, I won't go through that. Uh, how we set up the space, it's only for the Renaissance explorers right now, although every person can actually invite other people. Uh, there is no restriction around that. Uh, but it's invite only and the seeds account is required uh, in order to register. 
there is a simple category structure and uh, the idea is to extend it organically when it's needed and to experiment and improve on it. Uh, I'll quickly show the current uh, forum space. Uh, so this is how it looks right now. There are uh, two new topics. One is in, a, in the category for site feedback. So there are site feedback where we can talk about how to improve the, the forum and the uncategorized, which I won't get into right now. The main thing is that there is the game guide evolution category and in it there is outer space and exploration groups. And uh, this is the main space that we are gonna uh, participate in. I've also created a space for uh, the seeds ecosystem for topics that are wider than the game guide. Uh, for example, Haifa movement building, alliance onboarding, DHO creation, tokenomics, etc. cetera. Uh, this is not the main focus of the, of the forum, but I think that it's useful to have it as a category. Uh, there are like three topics already. Uh, I guess gameplay and analogy is led by Julio. And right now uh, I've also created uh, an invite topic that I'm gonna create uh with an invite link in it so uh this is the video that i've prepared and there is an invite here that is limited until monday and it's for 100 people so monday 21st and it's for 100 people so it's focused on us here uh i will copy and paste it into the chat and later into discord so everyone can uh, click the invite and join the forum and start conversations here. Um, anything else about... Uh, so the idea is to create and engage with the threads as you read through the game guide and speak up and make suggestions for for improvements. That is very important to be focused on making suggestions for improvements, not just like chatting. And engage with integrity and have fun and play well um that's it so if anyone has questions i'm open to receiving them right now i try to be brief any feedback um awesome work apostle thanks for taking that on and just diving in and ha making it happen um love that one quick feedback there you go a uh, quick one. Um, I we when we we were building this forum, the, we already know that of course seeds already have a forum, uh, and this the idea here is not to kind of uh, fork completely from the seeds forum. So this is a uh, initial space for creating uh, the the busy discussions, and then once the proposals are more ready in a more ready state, we can of course link to add a link on the seeds forum to the discourse forum so we can still use both tools because on the seeds forum you get reputation points and you get uh, mentioned on the blockchain so it's nice to kind of try to use both tools here are more active conversations and they're more like maybe the summary or maybe that's something that we want to share with the whole seeds community so that's it yeah definitely i'd see the space is once we want to start taking it to the rest of citizens, once we formed a proposal to change a protocol, then we bring that proposal over to the forum and just say, hey, this is what we've come up with. And then that's when we start inviting the feedback round with the rest of the citizens to engage. Um, also, every section of the game guide has an index to it. So it'll have the numbers at the beginning of each article. If you're talking about the game guide, just put the index in the first part of the forum post so that we can easily sort it and know what we're talking about. And that'll really help us creating little basic structures like that um, going forward. Um, cool. Does anyone else have any questions or feedback to Apostle on the forum? Cool. You can just give us a heart if you loved it. Um, Cool, so we've got eight minutes left. Um, last steps is we're creating those squads. Again, I think we've just narrowed it down to two, which is pretty nice because then most of us could join both of them if we'd like. Um, so let's find some times to do that. 
Um, we're still on section zero, it seems. So next week, we're going to do another one of these harvest sessions where we're going to go through if we have any more you know, thoughts or comments or tensions around how section zero is designed, if there's anything missing, if we need to change any of the language, if we haven't introduced a concept we feel like is vital to introduce in section zero, any of that. It's, you know, if section zero feels incomplete, what's missing? Um, or maybe what needs to be removed if it's too long or anything like that. Um, so let's try to do one more round and then maybe we might sign off section zero next week and we can get into section one is where the real kind of vegetables are at. Cool. So we have just a few more minutes left. Does anyone have anything they want to share into the space at all? So any closing remarks, any wisdom that they had thought of? It's kind of an open space for that to come through. Easy. Um, I had one thing. So tomorrow is storytelling. So maybe something to think about between now and the storytelling call, something to carry this thread forward um, is all about accessibility and inclusion, which I think is 99% storytelling, 1% technology. Um, if we're going to be inclusive, it's how do we tell the story in different ways that can you know, reach people where they're at and the perspectives that they're in. Um, something very alive for us is I was having a conversation with the caretaker, that's maybe the term, of the Bristol Pound. Um, and they're sharing that Seeds is, it's a beautiful story. She was super aligned with it, but she felt most people wouldn't be. It's like, you know, lunar cycles are a little bit weird and focusing on regeneration, maybe like this seems too far removed from what, you know, what our audience is, which just wants a basic like PayPal-like payment system. Um, and maybe we could talk about circular economies and start using tokens and badges and tracking provenance and that sort of story, which is a very vital story. And I think it's a bridge one. Um, so it's like unpacking those stories with how can we share what Seeds is in a way that's more palatable to more communities, because I think that's also going to be helpful as well. The, the many flavors of Seeds. It's all vegan ice cream, but it comes in, you know, 100 different varieties. But at the end of the day, it's just coconut milk, right? Um, so anyway, that's something I wanted to plant is, you know, consider what that means for you. Anything that comes up from thinking of that, I think starting off storytelling tomorrow with sharing those ideas would be powerful. Um, cool. So, and I'm going to ask one more time, just in case anything transpired since then and now, is anyone wanting to share any wisdom before we close out for today? Thoughts, impressions, any of it's very welcome here. My, uh, I have a very good impression that uh, a lot of the topics are coming up in various different people, independent of each other. So that means that the topic is has some kind of attraction power. And uh, I think that being guided by by these like internal forces could be a great way to evolve the game guide. Yeah. And evolve the structure of these calls too. So we're going to continue doing these coming together, collectively sensing and using that to steer our journey. So you know, that's why we're explorers. You know, it's we're exploring, not lecturing. There isn't a process we're following. We're stepping into new landscape. We're sensing the territory. We're looking for landmarks we might want to navigate towards, and we're making those decisions together. So again, it's a little bit slower process where the pathway is already marked, and we're just walking down it. Um, but just keeping that in mind, which is why these open spaces where we share our wisdom are so vital that we all work on our throat chakras or whatever we need to do um, to feel more inclined to speak up and share in this space. Because I know there's a lot of wisdom that all of you are holding on to, and I don't keep hearing it. So we need to cultivate a safer container or what we need to do um, in order to feel comfortable participating here and then listening that wisdom. So that's something for me as a facilitator to take in. So if there's anything that you might have to help me hold this space a little bit better so that you feel more comfortable for engaging. I would love um, so much to hear that. Um, so yeah, anything I can do to better hold space here, please let me know. Um, cool. 
So I'm not just going to keep asking over and over, even though I feel like there's something wanting to be said. So I'm not going to ask again, <laughs> but I will just end this out today and I will see you all throughout the week and next week. So beautiful, beautiful day. And feel free to unmute yourself and just say goodbye. It's always fun. Yay. Bye, everyone. Thank Love you, you all. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.